Why build one 224 Valkyrie rifle when you can build two? Gavin Gear here from ultimatereloader.com and makingwithmetal.com. That's exactly what I'm doing. Of course I'm going to build an AR-15 and 224 Valkyrie. That's what the cartridge was designed for. But I'm also in the middle of building this totally sweet Remington 700 bolt action gun also chambered in 224 Valkyrie. That's the subject of this series. Now in the last video, we finished up all of the barrel work on the breech end. We cut the tenon, we threaded the tenon, we cut the counter bore, we cut the chamber. Everything turned out great. In this video, we're gonna spin the barrel around in the lathe and work on the muzzle end. That's right, we're gonna thread the muzzle, we're gonna cut the muzzle crown, then we'll take the barrel, which is now done, and install it in the receiver using a barrel vise and an action wrench. So, where do we start? Well, we need to have a design in mind for our threaded muzzle profile. And I'm not gonna mess with success. I really like the way that they did this on the Ruger Precision Rifle. I copied it last time with my Winchester Model 70 and we're gonna do that again. So let's take some measurements so that we can reproduce what Ruger did. So this is the Ruger Precision Rifle threaded muzzle. This is actually my 6.5 Creedmoor. I also have one in 243 Winchester. And there's just a few things that we need to measure so that we can get everything down on paper. For the breech end, I call it a build sheet. This is just more like simple dimensions. So. It's 5 8 24. I've got a pretty heavy profile barrel here. I thought that would look better than half 28. And in terms of brakes and suppressors, I kind of want to standardize on 5 8 24 anyways. So we've got the OD, we've got the length of the tendon for this threaded muzzle, and then we've got the thread relief that I measured, and then kind of the length of the step here. The step is what aids the threaded muzzle accessory. It gets it lined up before the threads start engaging so that you don't cross the threads. So I measured those values. I wrote them down on the sheet. Now it's time to do essentially what we did on the breech end, getting the barrel faced, getting it dialed in, and then we can start to cut threads and cut the muzzle crown. So here we are back at the Precision Matthews PM1440 GT where we left off in the last video was we had finished the breech end. So it's time to loosen the chuck jaws, loosen the spider, outboard spider set screws, pull the barrel blank out, flip it around, this time pointing muzzle, muzzle pointing out of the spindle. And I did the same thing where I took a dead center, put it in the tailstock, and then held the muzzle where the bore exit is up to the dead center to center it while I brought the chuck jaws in with these pivoting and protection pads in place and then tightened it out down just a little bit tightened the outboard spider set screws, took a couple facing passes, and then again, I used a center drill to just deburr the bore exit. Now that's important because I'm again gonna use a grizzly rod to indicate off the inside of the bore so that we can get this aligned perfectly. The alignment is critical because if we have something like a long suppressor that we're screwing onto the muzzle, we could have a baffle strike and that kind of thing if it's not in perfect alignment. So in this case, you know, in the last video I talked about certain sections of where the chamber is critical in terms of alignment. This time is it, I just chose the last inch and a half of the bore towards the muzzle end and used the grizzly rod. I used the thousandth indicator first to get a rough aligned and then I moved over to the tenth indicator to get the final align done. And I just kept going back between those two points using the chuck jaws for radial alignment and then using the outboard spider for angular alignment. One adjustment influences the other, so you've gotta go back and forth until they both agree. This actually went pretty quick this time, so I was, I was happy with that. Once you get everything dialed in, it's time to tighten down those truck jaws and make sure that the needle on your indicator isn't moving. So basically, as you're tightening those truck jaws, you're splitting the difference on each opposite jaw and making sure that they center back to the appropriate zero value. So you need enough chuck jaw tension so that you know, the muzzle isn't going to spin in the chuck jaws, but not so much that you deform the muzzle. So it's kind of a little bit of a balancing act and it's, it's a feel thing, but you will get a feel for it and that's why I think it's great to practice on a practice section of barrel. I got some cut down from Benchmark and I did a 10 and turn down, I did some threading. Great way to get your feeds and speeds dialed in for 416R stainless in this particular case. Okay, 
So we have the, the muzzle end protruding from the spindle. Our chuck jaws are tensioned appropriately with the right amount of pressure. It's time to start cutting the tenon down. And again, this time I took the tool against the very end of the muzzle and zeroed out the z-axis and that gave me basically the distance that I'm cutting the tenon to and then I also took a pass, read the diameter, typed that value in for x. Now I can monitor the tenon length and the tenon diameter on my DRO which is awesome. So I got down to the appropriate value which was 0.625 because this is 5 8 by 24 and then it was time to cut the thread relief. I just took the value that I measured from the Ruger Precision Rifle for their thread relief for the diameter and used the same very carefully ground, perfectly square profile parting blade and used it as a grooving tool again to go in that amount. And what you do is you zero your DRO on the outside of that tenon diameter for the threaded section of the muzzle and you zero it out there and then as you go in you know you're reducing the diameter by that exact amount. Followed that up again with this special tool used for cutting next to a shoulder to clean the shoulder itself up. You want that shoulder to be nice and square. You want for it to have a good lockup with the suppressor or muzzle brake that you're screwing on. And both the thread concentricity and the squareness of that shoulder are gonna be critical so that you have perfect alignment between your suppressor bore and the bore of the barrel itself. Otherwise, you could have something like a baffle strike and that's not good. <laughs> so now we've got the thread relief and the shoulder cut and cleaned up. Now you can face off the muzzle itself. And this is where you wanna keep track of the overall length. I think I was at about 610 thousandths of an inch long in this particular case. So from the inside out, so that we have burrs going in, you take multiple facing passes until you like the face of the muzzle and you're at the appropriate tenon length overall. Then it's time to cut the recessed crown. This is just a flat crown. It's, it's not beveled, it's not angled and uh, by recessing the crown we provide a little bit of protection. If you bump the end of the muzzle up against something like a rock or a tree, it's not going to be affecting the crown itself, which is a good thing. Same design they had on the Ruger Precision Rifle. So I just copied that and then what you want to do is you want to take a cleaning rod with a patch on it, push it all the way through right where it comes out of that crown and make sure there's not any extra friction if you do have extra friction, you could have a burr there and you're going to take a really close look at it and maybe cut it again, that kind of thing. So I had cut the step and the step is that reduced diameter area where there's no threads on the very end of the muzzle where your suppressor or your muzzle brake can get aligned before the threads start engaging. And at this point, I was ready to do the threading itself. Okay, so again, I painted on the die cam. I set up the lathe for a feed of 24 threads per inch, 5 8 24. Cranked in the compound about a thousandth of an inch, did a quick pass and checked it with the thread pitch gauge. I confirmed it was 24, which is good. You don't want to thread it to the wrong specification. And what I like to do with a DRO is you've got your cross slide, you have it into a certain value, and then you dial your compound in until your tool hits, then you zero out the X for the cross slide. And what we're gonna do is each time we take a pass at those threads, we're gonna back it out so that we can go over the tops of the threads, go back to that zero point. Now we know that we're at the same exact spot and now we can crank the compound in a certain number of thousandths of an inch. Remember, we're coming at an angle, so we're not going straight in, so the depth is a little bit less. You can use your trig here. <laughs> but uh, I like to start at three, three to five thousandths for the rough passes and then when I get close, I crank it down to one. And then when I get really close to the finish line, I'm down at about a half thousandth per pass. I kept my spindle speed really high, like I talked about in the last video at 250, because with this carbide indexable 60 degree thread cutting tool, I found that that was the only way that I could get the surface finish that I wanted. And it turned out really, really good. So when you get really close, and I was using the digital calipers trick again, measuring the thread troughs, on the Ruger Precision Rifle and then measuring what I was cutting. Uh, when I got close enough, uh, you need a gauge or a trusted muzzle accessory. In this case, I've got a benchmark muzzle brake that I'm using here, that's 5 8 24, 
and I just screwed that on until it would screw all the way to the shoulder with not really much resistance. You want it to go fairly smooth and you can feel it lock up tight against the shoulder. Now you know your threads are good. I gave the tops of the threads just a little bit of a filing because I like a little bit of a flat profile on the top so that there's nothing sharp. The tops of the threads are not really the critical portion anyway. So at this point, I polished the crown a little bit with some sandpaper. Then it was time to remove the barrel from the spindle and mount it on the lathe so that I could polish the outside. And what I use for that is I put on my 5C collet chuck and I've got a little, what looks like a thread protector. It's just made out of aluminum, 5 8 24 threads on the inside. And I just hold onto that with a collet, screw the barrel into it, and then put a live center in the tailstock. And I put that against the exit of the chamber very carefully just a little bit of pressure but this spins with the barrel so it's not going to mar or harm that chamber exit area inside the counterbore on a Remington 700. Turn up the spindle speed and get some sandpaper out with a little bit of oil on it and this is what I use in place of a barrel spinner like my friend Bill Marr and my friend Gordy Gritters they have custom brackets with bearings on the end and the barrel can spin while they're using a buffing machine or sandpaper, that kind of thing. And that's a great thing to have and I intend to make one, but you can always turn it on the lathe <laughs> as a substitute and it works really well. I'll use that with the Winchester Model 70 build as well. So once I polish the barrel out, now it's time to screw it into the receiver. We're gonna go over to the bench and take a look at the tools that are required for that. Okay, time to tighten the barrel into the receiver with that recoil lug in the middle. And to do this, we're gonna need a couple special tools. I've got my Brownells barrel vise. I've got inch and a quarter bushings. We just slap these bushings on the barrel and then carefully guide it in, torque the screws down. And then we also need an action wrench. This is a Wheeler Engineering Remington 700 action wrench. You can see here, I did a little bit of filing on it. That was just to open it up for the oversized recoil lug that I'm using. I made very sure that I was evenly filing and got it within a thousandth of an inch. Now, you can screw the receiver on and then assemble this action wrench onto the receiver, but I actually found it easier and less awkward to just install the action wrench on the receiver without it being screwed on to the tendon threads. And you can see here, we also have this screw that goes into the bottom of the receiver, the quarter 20 hole that is on the Remington 700. Okay, so at this point, I put a little bit of anti-seize molly grease on the threads and I screwed the action wrench and the receiver onto the barrel tenon threads with the recoil lug in place and got it basically up to where the shoulder is. Now it's time to torque it down. You can use a torque wrench, but I like to do this by feel. Just torque, tighten it really good. That's my terminology, really good. And so it went together well. This is the moment of truth, okay? Now it's time to check our final headspace. You remember me talking in a couple of the previous videos about the crush factor, right? When we tighten everything together, we're accounting for things shrinking a couple thousands of an inch, right? Because everything's being clamped together. So <laughs> I put the bolt in, I put my go gauge in place and the handle went down. Step one, good, okay? Uh, now step two, I was real hold, really holding my breath for this one. Put the scotch tape on the back of the go gauge like I showed in the chambering video to make it effectively into a no-go gauge. Put the bolt in and nothing. It wouldn't go down. That's exactly what I wanted. So the crush factor of two thousandths of an inch worked out good with my just enough tightening. And now we have a barreled action. Okay, so there's one more thing that I'm gonna cover before we go on to mounting the barrel to action in the KRG Bravo stock, and that's making a custom thread protector. And we can actually just use that cutoff section of barrel that we cut off of the muzzle end. Really cool, so I'll show that in the next video. You're not gonna to wanna to miss any of this 224 Valkyrie action. We got a ton more coming up, the AR-15 stuff, the reloading, the shooting, the ballistics, all of it. So make sure you're subscribed to Gavin Tube with notifications, click on that little bell. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Until next time, happy machining and gunsmithing, happy shooting, and happy reloading. Yeah.